Thomas Weck and Peter Weck. Narrated by Peter Weck. King Limelot was in trouble. His tiny, once happy beendom was in trouble. In fact, all of the tiny bean-shaped bears in his beendom were in trouble too. Whether they were green like lima beans or red like pinto beans, they were all in terrible trouble. There was a monster in beendom. It was so big that it made the earth tremble with each pounding step. And the trees sway when it roared. Its teeth were longer than a man's hand. It was a megasaurus. And its favorite food was beans. The king summoned his three wisest advisors. They were owls, of course, because everyone knows about wise old owls, and asked for their advice. Howl the owl stepped forward and said, Your Majesty, we must find a different food for Megasaurus, so he will not eat beans. We will feed him pancakes. The king asked Howl the owl, Will you help the baker make the pancakes? Howl the owl shook with fear. Yes, Your Majesty, he replied. After all, it was his idea. The king summoned all of the best bakers in the land. Great stoves were built, and the bakers and Howl the Owl made pancakes as fast as they could. Soon there was a growing mountain of pancakes rising higher and higher by the hour. Suddenly the beans felt the earth tremble and heard a terrible roar. The trees began to sway. The Megasaurus was coming. He sniffed the air, and with one scoop of his mighty arm, Megasaurus picked up the pancakes and swallowed them in one gulp. Then he scooped up Howl and all the bakers and swallowed them too. And the rest of the beans? They scurried to hide until Megasaurus went away. King Limelot quickly summoned his two remaining owls. Tell the owl stepped forward. Your Majesty... We must drive Megasaurus off with bows and arrows. The king asked Towel the Owl, Will you stand with the archers and fire upon Megasaurus? Towel the Owl shook with fear. Yes, your majesty, he replied. After all, it was his idea. The king summoned all the best archers in the land. They practiced until they could all hit the bullseye at the target 300 paces away. Bean paces, that is. Suddenly the beans felt the earth tremble and heard a terrible roar. The trees began to shake. The Megasaurus was coming. They fired their arrows, so many that they darkened the sky. Their aim was true, and every arrow hit Megasaurus. He looked like a pincushion, but the arrows did not harm him. Instead, the arrows made him angry. Megasaurus blasted such a roar it knocked over Towel the Owl and the archers. Megasaurus fell upon them and swallowed them whole. And the rest of the beans? They scurried to hide until Megasaurus won. King Limelot quickly summoned his last remaining owl. Towel the Owl said, Your Majesty, you must build a big wall around Beendom. King asked Fowl the Owl, Will you help build the wall? Fowl the Owl shook with fear. Yes, your majesty, he replied. After all, it was his idea. The king summoned all the best masons in the land. Large pebbles were gathered, and the masons, along with Fowl the Owl, built the wall. Suddenly the beans felt the earth tremble and heard a terrible roar. The trees began to shake. The Megasaurus was coming. Megasaurus crashed through the wall, and the pebbles came tumbling down. He scooped up Owl the Owl and all the masons and swallowed them whole. And the rest of the beans? They scurried to hide until Megasaurus went away. King Limelot was desperate. 
He summoned all of his citizens, asked if anyone would help. El Jobin, a servant's son, came forward and said, I will rid this land of Megasaurus. El Jobin whispered a plan to the king. Will you carry out this plan yourself? The king asked. Yes, your majesty, El Jobin said. After all, it is my idea. At El Jobin's direction, the king summoned all the craftsmen and woodsmen of the land. He had them build a giant monster mask much bigger than Megasaurus's head and with teeth as long as a man's arm. Next, he ordered that all the mirrors of the land be brought to him, and he had craftsmen build a wall of mirrors wider and taller than Megasaurus. Then he had them make a lot of megaphones. Finally, he had the woodsmen cut down 1,000 tall trees far enough through so that they were ready to fall, and then he had each one held upright by a rope. After everything was ready, El Jobin set off. At nightfall, he found the monster. Megasaurus scooped him up and was about to eat him, but El Jobin called out, Don't harm me, Megasaurus! I came to warn you of great danger. Great danger, Megasaurus asked. Yes, there is a terrible new monster roaming the land, even bigger than you, and his favorite food is a Megasaurus. How? Of course, El Jovian said, but the Aminosaurus must not see you or he will eat you up. You will have to disguise yourself. Come, I have it all planned out. I will take you to him. It was still nighttime when they got to the place where the craftsman had built the giant monster mask. What a big mask! Megasaurus said, putting it on. There were two large holes for his eyes. The top of the mask extended far above his head. Just at daylight, they approached the wall of mirrors. There it is, the Aminosaurus, El Jobin said, pointing to the wall of mirrors. You can let me off here, walk closer for a better look. But remember, whatever you do, do not take off your mask or he will eat you up. Megasaurus set El Jobin down and started toward the mirrors, unaware that all he was seeing was the reflection of himself in the supergiant mask. Megasaurus's eyes widened at the size of Minosaurus's head. As he got closer, his eyes bulged at the sight of teeth as long as a man's arm. Megasaurus trembled at the thought of those mighty teeth eating him up. Suddenly, there was a terrible roar as thousands of beings hidden in the woods shouted all at once through their megaphones. At the same moment, the bean woodsmen cut the ropes holding up the many pre-cut trees to make them come crashing down all at once. Megasaurus jumped with terror. He whirled about and ran as fast as he could. The mask slipped down so he could not see, and he tripped and fell with such a crash that it shook the earth and smashed the mask to pieces. When the jolt of his fall, Howl the Owl and the Bakers, Howl the Owl and the Archers, and Fowl the Owl and the Masons came tumbling out of Megasaurus's mouth, they were all still alive and well. Megasaurus paid them no attention. He scrambled to his feet and fled the kingdom of Beendom, never to be seen or heard from again. King Limelot was happy. His tiny, once happy beendom was happy once again. In fact, all of the tiny bean-shaped bears in his beendom were happy too. Whether they were green like lima beans or red like pinto beans, they were very, very happy. Except perhaps for those three wise owls. They were replaced by one very wise El Jovi. The 